And one of the important lessons from Iceland is to allow democracy to decide the day. When the financial crisis hit, as you all know, the banks collapsed in a matter of few days. And for a year or two, Iceland was exhibit number one of a failed financial state. When we now look at Iceland six years later, we are now considered by many as example number one of a successful recovery after a financial crisis. And why is that? What did we do that's different from others? We followed a recipe which was not the traditional IMF Washington so-called consensus of how to deal with a financial crisis. We did the things that were considered absolute taboo when the world was dealing with the Asian financial crisis uh, a few decades ago. First of all, we let the banks fail. We introduced currency controls, which up to then had been an absolute taboo in a Western, in a Western country. We, uh, we devalued the currency which of course is not open to the Eurozone, but became a critical aspect of our recovery. And one of the lessons of the Icelandic story is that if the entire establishment of Europe could be so wrong in our case, why are they necessarily right in every other case? And the problem is with all due respect to my friends in the leadership position in these countries, it is a need to have the intellectual honesty to examine how wrong they were. Because what is at stake is the life and the future and the well-being of people. Because what we realized in Iceland is that a modern economy is not just a coalition of economic relationships or financial institutions or effective companies. An economy is fundamentally a community of people.